Been in there for six months or a they year. They could, put a, <laughs> they could put a bar rail with some bottles in, is what we should do right here. Who's the other drawer for that? <laughs> Can leave her a saucer of water at least. <laughs> I can't say anything because it all comes right back to us. <laughs> Would we do that? Yeah, in a heartbeat. Maybe just he sure opens opens himself up for being voted into position when he's not. I just find that out if you <laughs> sure don't want a position, you best show up, otherwise they're gonna yeah. railroad railroad you into it. Yeah. A lot of times you don't even hear the whistle. <laughs> Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. to approve. Thank you so much for 
allowing me to be here tonight. I always sound so bass bassy. Do I sound like a man? <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll try to raise my voice here a little bit. Um, <laughs> tonight I'm presenting on the Trust Edge, how top leaders gain faster results, deeper relationships, and a stronger bottom line. Uh, this is a presentation based on this book, uh, which if you're ever interested in borrowing it from me, I am happy to lend it. And I attended this uh, um, presentation at a conference with the Joint uh, Council of Extension Professionals, which was held in February. It was a national um, conference, and I wanted to present on this. The keynote speaker is D David Horsager that um, gave this presentation. He happens to be from the Twin Cities, and um, I highly w would highly recommend him as a speaker. He was very engaging and entertaining. And I get to give you a really brief synopsis of this. So um, I do plan on presenting this to our home and community educators. They offer uh, leadership trainings to the public. And so we're actually meeting next Thursday and looking at our schedule for this next year and when we're having those leadership trainings. Um, so take a look for that. And um, I'm also going to work with the Chamber of Commerce and offer it um, through them. So I will go ahead and get started. And um, as trust increases, so does production, morale, uh, productivity, and innovation. Now, why is this important to us? If you want to go ahead and, and um, We'll take a look at this. We are all leaders in this room, uh, and also trust is a very valuable commodity. Whether it's trust of a family member, we're all part of a family, or trust in our positions that we hold. Um, so uh, it is important. So how can we develop trust? People really trust clarity. They trust what's clear and they mistrust the ambiguous or what they don't really know for sure. So a trusted leader is clear about their vision and purpose um, and what expectations are and also communicate those expectations. So when you're thinking about yourself as a leader um, or we all are, we can also think about how do we handle our daily tasks and are we doing the best things that can help to promote our vision and purpose uh, here in the county? And are we doing the best that we can around communication? So that is clarity. The next pillar in trust is compassion. And people put faith in those who care beyond themselves. And um, boy, this really struck a note when we were talking about the flag being at half staff. and. I chose this picture because I think um, who has more compassion towards our country and towards each other, if you've ever gotten to know soldiers or someone in the armed forces, they really, uh, to me, demonstrate compassion. So how can we demonstrate compassion? One is listening um, and showing appreciation, whether it's just a thank you or writing a thank you note. Um, also waking up, and by that I mean really opening our eyes and our ears and focusing and paying attention, and then showing compassion through serving others, and certainly you as a county board serve others. Um, so how can we serve others? Because when we serve others, that is really showing compassion, which is that second pillar of trust. The next pillar is showing character and good character. And people notice when we make the right decision over what is easy. So um, that is one way that we show character. Other ways that we can show our character is being humble, giving credit to others when credit is due, also making decisions um, in, a, in a timely manner, and understanding or knowing in our mind why we are making the decisions we're making. So, and also being intentional, those go in hand in hand. And then living according to your values too, um, and having high values. So that is, all of that is 
showing and developing your character, and that really helps people to um, trust in you. Okay, the next pillar is competency. And competency is when people actually have confidence in you when you stay fresh, when you stay relevant, and when you stay, stay capable. So how can you do that? And one way is um, asking yourself, well, do I keep adjusting and adapting and learning? And as a leader, do you enable learning? Also, is there a circle of professionals that you can grow with? So maybe as county board members, you have other county board members um, throughout the state that you perhaps uh, learn from. And then being intentional with downtime. And by that, I mean maybe while you're in the car, you listen to an educational CD or a motivational CD. Or um, maybe it's uh, when you're on your computer and um, you're intentional about choosing something that's educational for you. Those are some examples. Or maybe reading a book that's motivational or, or educational. So instead of um, turning on the TV and watching four hours of King of Queens or whatever it might be, <laughs> um, which is one of my favorite shows. Okay. The next uh, pillar that is, uh, has to deal with trust is commitment. And people believe in those who uh, can stand through adversity. And um, the, certainly uh, these are some icons of things or people that have stood through adversity. Um, the first is the company, the Volkswagen company. They have evolved over time and have had some e adversity um, and they continue to grow and look at bettering themselves. Um, actually, Harley Davidson, which I found really interesting, is one of the companies that made it through World War II. All the other motorcycle companies were not able to make it, but because of the advancements and the flexibility they had as a company, they were able to um, continue on because they were committed to continuing. And then, of course, the, the pillar of um, commitment to ad overcoming adversity is Mother Teresa there. So um, think about what can I do, what can you do um, to be committed to a goal, a project um, that will increase trust. Okay, the next pillar uh, is connecting with people. And people want to do business. They want to follow. They want to buy from. They want to be with friends. Okay, so think about maybe in the last 24 or 40 hour, 48 hours, if you were out maybe shopping or, or visiting with somebody, or how do you connect, you know, that person that you want to buy from. Don't you want to do business with somebody that's more friendly than not? Um, so... People can trust others if they feel like you're being friendly. Also, if you um, don't complain, so listen to yourself. If you catch yourself complaining, try to turn that around. Try not to complain. Try to be positive. And also being thankful. So if you think about your friends or the people that you connect with um, or that you want to be around with, they're probably positive. Hopefully they're not complaining too much. They're being thankful. And maybe they're also communicating. When I think about my friends or being a friend, it really is making a phone call or making a, co a connection with them. Um, and that increases trust. All right, then our next pillar is contributing. And um, people respond to results. And one way that we get results um, and build trust is through giving contributions, giving our time, giving our attention, um, just giving, the gift of giving. Maybe it's to a project. Maybe it's to a concern of yours um, within the county even or near your home. Um, and also just giving people a chance, giving people the benefit of a do the doubt is really contributing to their growth and trusting each other. 
And then, boy, I'm really running through this fast. The next um, pillar, and the last pillar is being consistent and consistently practicing those pillars of trust. Um, people love to see when the little things are done consistently. And uh, it, it may be that um, if you know, you're consistently early or you're consistently on time, or uh, here I chose uh, Olive Garden. It happens to be one of my favorite restaurants. And the reason I put that um, on there, uh, anybody else like Olive Garden? Okay, a number of you. So the last time I was there, the service was great. They're always friendly. Um, our waitress was really amazing, great sense of humor. And their food, I've never had bad food at Olive Garden. It's always consistent. Now, McDonald's is another um, kind of an icon brand that's lasted through generations. And they're actually going through some changes, but they're really consistent. Um, sometimes, you know, I don't know if their service is as good as it used to be, but there's one menu item that I always get at McDonald's that I know I love the grilled cheese, grilled chicken Southwest salad, and it's always the same consistently. So I can trust if I want a grilled chicken salad that I can go to McDonald's and get a really good one for a great price. So thinking about us as leaders and developing trust, are we consistent in our actions and not just our words? How can you be consistent? How can we all be consistent so we th that we can develop trust with people that we're working with? Um, one way is creating a clear plan and having a clear vision. And every day maybe writing down, what do I need to do? What can I do today that I can develop a trust um, through all these pillars, which you have a list of right now. So um, I actually have uh, presented this to department heads and mid-management in June. Um, and 21 people attended that. There were 21 participants. Um, I did have some evaluations that came back from that. Um, some of the things that they liked about the training was that it was a reminder to some of being clear and communicating. Um, it was also a good reminder to be positive, to be friendly, to smile, to be thankful. We have so much to be thankful for. Um, and to not complain. And then um, also they found that the emphasis on consistency was important. And uh, another bullet point that could be up there is not agreeing to anything you can't deliver. So if you're gonna agree to something, think about can I deliver this? Um, which is always a great reminder for everyone. So um, that was one of the things that was on the evaluations more than once was not complaining and, and being positive, and that can help to lead to people trusting you. Okay, any questions? I kept to my 15 minutes. <laughs> so if, um, seriously, if you're interested in this book, it's a very good um, book and uh, pretty easy read, lots of pertinent questions. If you're ever uh, interested in more training on it, uh, it's one of, those things that, as I mentioned, I'll be training at a couple different places in the county. So thank you so much for your time.
today that will pass the county board and not the, and they, if I heard it right, they passed a resolution to put on a wheel tax. And if I heard, Blair again, I, if I heard right, the radio wasn't the best, but I listened to that it could generate upwards of a million dollars for the highway project. What are they looking at per vehicle? Or $25 per vehicle. But the one... If you're county, if you're registered in the county, yeah. and okay. the one representative or county board member felt that that was unfair, and I guess I got to go along with him because you, the Packer County is notorious for tourism in the Twin Lakes and that, and they pay nothing other than the, well they pay the room tax and the gas, but they don't pay a wheel tax. They use the road, but I guess things are coming to that. So something the state or federal has to we can put we on we can implement that yeah. 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 talking that kind of revenue though and you put that right in the state's hand to get that trickle down to where it could be possible to use bus to do it because they're going to oh, have you bus you what would make what would make more sense i think you go and buy a fishing license a hunting license it's good for one year you get a driver's license and correct me if i'm wrong it's good for seven or eight years why don't they cut that in half and look at the money that that would generate then I mean, it'd be just astronomical because people want to do it. They want to hunt. They want to fish. They want to drive. Obviously, you're going to pay for that license, and that would be fair for everyone because if you're from Madison, Milwaukee, Chicago, wherever, well, Chicago, never mind. But in the <laughs> state, you would pay that, and that could go to the road, to the road projects funding. And I mean, the townships we're we're strapped, and the county, I'm sure the committee knows that you've got so many dollars to stretch over, and the state. I don't know, sometimes you wonder, they've got a bridge project in Clome, and I think, I haven't stopped, but I'm going to, I think they're taking the paint off with a wire brush because they've been there two weeks on one <laughs> section of that bridge. Too <laughs> close. Too close, that makes more sense, but wh who's ever allowing those bids isn't <laughs> thinking, I mean, to put the, and then on Highway 21, I don't know if they're, you ask everybody and everybody doesn't know anything about that bridge on the White River. <coughs> They're just going wild on that. I mean, what they're doing, are, is there plans for a four lane that they haven't informed the, I mean, seriously, there's gotta be something that they're spending that much time and it's not just an ordinary culvert, it's pretty state of the art the way it looks what you can see behind the barricades, so. You know more about it, Donald? No, just. I don't look at one. No, I have several thousand. <laughs> Yeah. 
that you know the people around us are just like took care of the deer and stuff like that and just like let them cut it up. However, it really is cut up. But uh, that brings to a very sad lifestyle. Yeah. Uh, they don't have any pets. They don't have that hassle. So you know, my job is linked to the deer and I pick up deer that mm-hmm. need care. So if they're not going to be here anymore, then you know they won't make that money anymore. And if they gave it back to the county. <coughs> When they have a license increase, they should designate like those funds are going for instead of Correct. keeping it wide and buried and letting them disperse the funds. That's the problem you got, and the DNR has always dealt that problem. Yeah, that's true. I think that when they first instituted that, they had a pretty good idea of the federal grant that they were going to have. But it should be in. It should be when you at a resolution when they had the documentation. It had, should have been stipulated, and then there should have been somebody be monitoring that money where it flowed to. Should have been put directly into an, ac- an account to draw to remove that those charges. I thought didn't the didn't the state approve how the budget this year was park us removal? Well, the state was but the county asked for. Oh really? It wasn't like three hundred thousand dollars or something. Three hundred plus three thousand, I think. But the state was. Yeah, they're still melting down into the state around twenty yeah. three. Yeah. Yeah. Twenty one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They haven't. They haven't been standing up in the. Any of the just didn't get any. Doesn't seem it. Doesn't look. They should have relief people that would take over for that, and and we should find somebody to take over and not just leave them where they are and blow it up and yeah. Well, I think uh, the deputy is most definitely worthy of the position. <laughs> well, the John said they're not sure. Uh, they're not sure on the position. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they're just and that's when we vote for the deputy. Yeah, yeah. 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 Popcorn maker. Um, I've heard a lot of concerns from the public about how we're maintaining our roadsides, and I wonder if the uh, LED department could give us a report on what their policies are for grass cutting and keeping it in use. There were some concerns there that needed to go with John too. I just felt he had a reputation, but here it's still on the roadside. Yeah, and you gotta understand, you know, the resource, the resources. Um, what we can't do is only make up for what the deer do on a good year and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It's all just a, a budget thing at the end of the day. Um, so um, what a lot of things happen in the state park that the roadside closures do not. It's just put everybody at risk and then it's even if you have had your pet in the back of every deer will be upset. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah. Crops and fields that they grow. What you could do is designate the uh, entire county as well. They have those roads, you know, they don't do any maintenance. Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, you have to maintain them. I, I will. Don't let them fool you on that. <laughs> Trust me. We got one. The rustic county we could be. <laughs> That's not cheap either. If huh? That's not cheap either. If you've got to run a grader over it once a month or more, haul the limestone or gravel back in there, figure it out sometime. That's not any cheaper. I think oh, no, they're, 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 I don't think they're looking at high traffic roads. I think they're looking I'm at sure. I'm sure. Sure, lower traffic roads. My subdivision hasn't been paved in 12 years I lived there. We saved them a lot of money when the roads were going. And I don't blame them. They don't got the money, the money can't be spent. It's easier to maintain a few potholes and gravel than it is to. Well, we should yeah. have had different grants. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> and proud of it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> you probably sell them off as water frontage if you can get them big enough. <laughs> Thank you. 